So by now we uh, we should be broadcasting from our uh, our office in uh, in Utrecht. So uh, first of all, welcome to our uh, cozy little office. It may not look like your average office, but at least those who've uh, who've been here, they'll know that this is actually what it looks like. Yes, and, uh, we're uh, we're very happy to uh, to have you here on our very first webinar where you can actually see us talk. So rather than hide, hiding behind. Uh, PowerPoint presentation and slides, we thought, well, let's get our faces out there and uh, get out of our comfort zones and, and tell you all about uh, about Axon 4.3, which, uh, yeah, is it is it released or not? So what's, uh, I, I have uh, Stephen here, the uh, lead developer of Axon Framework. And uh, so Stephen, what's up with this version 4.3? Well, it's actually, it has been released. The artifacts are out there. Uh, we did this yesterday, so everything's now pushed as far as the code goes, at least. We're still doing some minor tweaks, mainly around the reference guide, so you might be missing some of the documentation if you're looking it up, but everybody can just download it at this stage. They can use it. But they don't know how, because the documentation is still to yes, be published. They're right? still, yeah. So it's kind of in the, in the twilight, so uh, if, you're, if you're on the webinar, you will be the first to hear what's, uh, what's new, and uh, we're, we're kind of in the, in the process uh, still. Uh, so in, uh, in, in these, uh, in, from all of these new features that we're going to talk about, what, which one is your, your personal favorite? My personal favorite. So for, for me, that's definitely going to be the Grayson Shutdown. And yes, that's partially because that was the majority of my work. You know, uh, you've got to be proud of the things you're doing, right? Uh, but I, I truly think that it's going to be a nicer way to operate with, a, with an Axon application through this Grayson Shutdown. And what, what does it do? I mean, how... Uh... Why, why, why wasn't it graceful in the first place? What, what's so graceful about uh, shutting down? So, so what's now graceful about it is that the components, the infrastructure components, which framework has, we can annotate those, the shutdown methods, and shut them down in a certain phase so that we can define the order in which components shut down. Additionally, a component can have several shutdown moments that you want to first stop this part and first stop the second part. You can, for example, assume if you have a command bus, which you distribute your messages to the outside world, that you first want to stop dispatching from that node to the outside world and still be able to receive some stuff. And then later on, you break the connection. Yeah, so you're, you're stopping the ingest of new work before you actually stop the, the, the components that you need for, for processing. Exactly. All right, that sounds, uh, yeah. sounds good. Yeah, so I, I have a little favorite of my own. Uh, and it's actually uh, uh, the aggregate polymorphism. Uh, it's uh, I, I love it because it's the uh, it's a story that actually that's older than Axonic. It's a story that was initially planned for uh, for 3.1, uh, although it was uh, I, I didn't check the actual labels that it has, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was a must for 3.1. Uh, and then we decided not to. And, and the, the reason I'm I'm so happy we finally have it out there because the API was so insanely difficult to uh, to build, but we are finally able to uh, define aggregates in a hierarchy, uh, have different command handlers within that hierarchy, and uh, an Axon will just figure out when loading an aggregate which uh, actual implementation to uh, to build, uh, and then invoke the uh, the specific handler on that. So you can you can override command handlers if you have specific logic in them, and uh, I think there's a lot of uh, a lot of power to uh, to get from that uh, that feature, but. Uh, we'll have to learn how uh, how you guys are are going to use it, and uh, so we, we really like you know, to have some uh, some feedback on uh, on this feature. But it, yeah, it has been around for for a couple of years now on uh, on the uh, on the list. So what, what kind of other uh, other things can, uh, can our, our users expect? So so this is definitely a very strong modeling addition we now have into the framework. It's very very strong the polymorphism stuff. Uh, we also have a creator update in place. So you can now tell a command and learn aggregate that it needs to either create or update an aggregate. And how does it know that? How does it do that? So we have an additional annotation. Creation policy is what it's called. So you annotate your command handlers with creation policy and then you can define what the policy is. Do you always want to create a new one? Never want to create a new one or create if it's missing, if it's not there. So does that mean I can also now create a command handler method, just a regular instance method, and just annotate it with always create a new one, and it's just like a constructor. So exactly. I don't have to make that mistake, or I, I see a lot of users that I instruct for the very first time, I see them uh, build these constructors, and then 
or uh, uh, command headers that are not constructors and are making that mistake. So that's uh, so now we just need to put that annotation on, and then uh, we're uh, we're good. Exactly. That's definitely going to sort of help people out with some headaches they might be having when they're using that feature. I've seen it myself in the training as well a couple of times. So that's one of the things, and I have a couple of miscellaneous things I really want to share. So we have some additions done to the test pictures. So new components can be registered, like handler and answer definitions, parameter resolvers, uh, more advanced things, but they weren't really easy to configure for your test pictures. Uh, added validations as well for uh, scheduled uh, events and deadline messages. Uh, and you can now define your serializer to be leaned very easily. On the builder, you can say my extreme or my Jackson serializer. I want to do lenient serialization. And the last one I truly think is very important to share is that we have additional uh, status information on the tracking event processor. So you can see the position, uh, you can see whether it's replaying or merging, but also what the status is, the difference between that. Share screen. Apparently, we are not showing video. Let's see what happens now. Okay, this is uh, so it's all new, new for us as well. So it's uh, apparently we're okay. So uh, it's a learning curve for all uh, for us as well. So let's uh, uh, you're uh, you're just uh, looking at us uh, in in real life. Right? There's nothing fake about this, and that's a good part. So the uh, yeah the, the linear serialization I, I I personally like it because I, I know this that in my um, my training sessions I always explain this you know as a as a good practice and I think the more and more people start building these uh, distributed systems that they uh, we, we need to teach them what the good practices are right so we need to really um, uh, make it easier for those uh, best practices to um, uh, to to be used, right? Uh, so uh, just having a single uh, single options uh, or single let's say configuration options makes it uh, makes it better. Uh, I'm looking forward to the moment where lean serialization becomes a default rather than you know, we we always take the approach of not introduce something that suddenly changes the default uh, because we want to know how uh, how people are uh, are using uh, uh, are, are using it. Yes. All right. Sounds uh, sounds sounds good. So those are the, the major framework uh, things, yeah. right? And uh, well, there's uh, some uh, some Axon uh, server uh, stuff uh, that I, I personally like a lot. Uh, that um, we we see a lot of our customers they've been waiting for the, the backup nodes. Right? Yeah. So that's uh, that's a big one. Um, so there's the ability in a, in an enterprise uh, an Axon server enterprise setup to um, to configure certain nodes within a context. You can define the primary nodes. And then you can say, I want these uh, these events that we're populating to also be backed up to to other nodes, uh, which is very useful because it allows you to do cross data center backups pretty pretty easy. And they're streaming backups, right? They're not uh, running behind. You can choose whether or not they take part in uh, in the transactions. Uh, so you can uh, you can have these active backups, what we call them, and passive backups. And if you have active backups, then at least one of these backups has to acknowledge a, uh, a transaction before it's actually committed, uh, which is uh, which is very powerful uh, in, in certain uh, setups. Um, we've also had a lot of uh, clients uh, who want to run Axon server in uh, in, in containers. Right? And Kubernetes is a, is a very a very popular. Um, so we we spend a lot of time on on improving that. And there's um, there's a possibility now to define, let's say, the uh, to, to mention one node. You can statically configure a single node to become the the seed, if you will, of a of an entire cluster. And when that node sees that the host name mentioned there is its own host name, it will automatically initialize itself as the, uh, the the first node in the cluster. And other nodes will automatically attempt to register. But they will not fail when it doesn't succeed, when they cannot reach that node, but they will retry for a while. So that gives you the ability to tell, just tell Kubernetes, right, start three of these instances and uh, uh, initialize a cluster out of these three instances, and then you, you, can, uh, you can get started uh, right away. And that, that getting started experience, as you know, in, in framework, right, the, the framework is, um, um, has always, we've always taken the approach of 
building something that's easy to use, it's a pretty complex stuff. And uh, we wanted to, uh, to get that experience better in, uh, in Axon Server as well. Um, so yeah, just like uh, some minor improvements, but there's some, uh, some minor improvements, some hidden improvements in Axon Server as well. Uh, especially the uh, the replication performance is something you will notice uh, has been uh, has improved in, uh, in Axon 4.3. Um, so in Axon Server 4.3, of course, in the Enterprise Edition, because there's no replication in, uh, in the Standard Edition. Um, so there's um, you'll you'll notice in less latency for uh, for commits to to be acknowledged. But we've also reduced the uh, the CPU usage when a cluster is completely idle. Uh, we have a few customers that run uh, quite a large number of contacts on these mm -hmm. machines. Uh, we'll get to one of those uh, in a bit uh, at the very end of this uh, this webinar. Um, but the um, the CPU usage when you have a dozen contacts running was noticeable. Right? It's, it's not it wasn't close enough to zero. So now it uh, it will uh, it will use much less CPU when idle. Which leaves more room on the CPU for, for processing of other uh, other components. Um, and there's one thing that you know, you you've had in framework for a long time already, which is the uh, the load factor on the distributed command bus. And for some reason, we we really never noticed we didn't have that on Excel Server. It just missed it. We we missed it. We we never got any questions about it. Uh, apparently, it's a feature that nobody wants to use. Uh, which is not entirely true, so we ended up implementing it. But as of 4.3, we uh, we always uh, also have the load factor for for command handling on um, uh, on the distributed on the command bus by Axon Server. Um, and then lastly, uh, for, especially for for operations based on the experience that we we have, we got back from uh, from the field. We um, we improved the, uh, the metrics that we exposed from Axon Server. Uh, they are much more detailed, but also uh, grouped in a way that, especially when you use Prometheus, you can get much more, uh, much easier uh, information out of it. So you can actually see the number of commands in total, and then if you want, using tags, you can uh, split them by uh, by application or by Axon Server node or you can make whatever uh, intersection or cross section or uh, that, that you really want. Right? That's, uh, 